Hey everybody, I wanted to send out a quick little video tutorial just to cover some basic ways that you can do black and white conversion in Photoshop. Now you may think that you've done this and mastered this, um, but it never ceases to amaze me how many people actually don't understand the various techniques for converting to black and white. So let's, let's cover the one that's been beat to death. Um, everybody knows that you can simply just convert a color photo to a grayscale photo, right? And that's as simple as going to image mode, and coming down and choosing grayscale. And when you do that, Adobe after the years finally realized that people were doing this the wrong way, so they added a warning that said, discard color information to control the conversion, use image adjustment black and white. And we're gonna do that in a little bit. But just so you can see, when you choose discard, it just converts it to a grayscale image. Now this is really no different whatsoever, let me just undo that, than you going in and picking hue and saturation, right, if we were to do an image adjustment, and grab the saturation slider and slam it all the way to the left. That's, that's in essence what just happened. You just removed the hue values from the graphic. And this is sort of a shame because there's actually a better quality more often than not in a singular channel. So for example, if we were to look at the red channel, then the green channel, and then the blue channel, they each have a very distinctively different tonal range as a grayscale image. What we wanna be able to do is pick the best attributes from each of those. So let's just have a comparison here. I'm gonna go in and choose image mode grayscale. There's my warning. And we'll leave that one over here on the left. Now for the one in the middle, this is the technique that most people don't ever learn. And I like to use this quite a lot when editing my black and white photos. Um, just it has a little bit of a different feel than working with saturations. So what we're gonna do here is use a layer adjustment that is called gradient map. Now the way gradient map works is it's based on uh, creating a gradation from your foreground and background color that you have over here in the tool strip. So I have black and white, so we're gonna get an actual black and white image. So we choose gradient map, and it applies that image adjustment to the photo. Now already you can see there's a few differences in here. The sky is subtly a little bit different. There's a little bit more contrast going on in the tree. Uh, the grass itself looks a little bit sharper but they're still fairly comparable, right? Here's where the editing through a gradient map can become very helpful. If you click on the gradient in the gradient map uh, under the adjustments dialog box here, it brings up the gradient editor, okay? Now, this defines the tonal range that can be applied to the hue values of this image, but it actually works much more like a histogram in levels. So understanding where you want a certain tone to be applied over the factual tone that exists in the image. Let me show you what I mean. Right now, the image is being spread from black to white based on the colors that were there. That's really no different than reducing the saturation. But if you click in here and add a point, now what you're saying is, I want this tonal value to be applied with the equivalent value that should have been here in the picture. So if it was in the middle, it would be 50% gray. Now you're saying everything that was 50% gray should now be processed with this black and then blended from here. So you see our picture got very dark, very grungy, kind of weird going on in here, right? But this is where you can get into controlling the idea of bracketing and tonal zones. So if I click on the color for that middle slider and I say I want this to be something close to a 50% gray, which is 128, 128, 128 in RGB or 50% brightness. Now you could start sliding this around to a new location in essence, creating a different gamma point. So maybe I slide this to the right, bring down some of those tones, or left to brighten up the image. And you can keep adding points and changing that tonal value to create more punch in your image. So if I go in here and make this a very light gray, the distances between each of these points and how much blending happens in essence, is creating mini contrast zones between these two points. And you can control the distance between those two contrast points. So you can see there, I've got a very bright image with strong contrast, but I have some dynamic capability to affect where those middle grays fall in a contrast range. Okay, last but not least, the other technique that is commonly used. This is just to use, as instructed earlier by that warning message, now let's add the black and white image adjustment. 
So I've added that and you can see by default, it just sort of auto calculates what it thinks the conversion should be. So now we're working on this picture on the right. But the way that this works is understanding a breakdown of hue spectrum and being able to control each of those hue ranges independently. So now instead of working on the composite tones like we saw in the gradient map adjustment, now you're actually working based on specific color values. And this works really, really well, especially if you're trying to customize the brightness or the gamma of a very specific hue. So let me show you what I mean. If we were to go in here and grab any of these color sliders, if that color exists in the photo, you can control how bright or dark that hue spectrum is. So we know the sky had uh, blue values in it, right? So if we go in here and slide the blues down, we get a darker sky. Now it's logical to think there's some cyans in there, so we could darken that up as well. And there, we've already got a much more dramatic sky than we have in the other two images. Our grass was sort of a yellowy orange. Now I could slide these two, but maybe the hue is made up of both yellow and red. So if we grab this little hand slider here, it's a sampler, and we put our cursor in the grass, and then click and drag left and right, you can see I can control it just by sampling into the picture. So now I've got that nice and bright. And then I'm gonna go back here and grab the tree and sample it. And you see it's primarily red. So I'm just gonna brighten that up a little bit just to get some contrast into the bark. So you can see there's three totally different ways to convert a photograph to black and white, each offering their own custom controls. For me, I often mix these techniques. I might take this particular black and white image and drop it on top of this image and then mask the sky in. So this just gives you a whole range of techniques for converting to black and white and creating the most punchy effect that you control versus letting the computer decide for you. Hope you guys find this useful and helpful. And of course, if you have any questions, just feel free to contact me. All right, have fun editing your pixels.